first Sunday of summer. I'm Carly Callan, the youth director here at University United Methodist. We're in a time of transition between pastors, so I am going to be with you today, and then I think next week, Mike and Lori are going to lead you down in the forum for Red, White, and Orange Sunday. If you'll open your bulletin, the uh, calendar on the left side is pretty empty. We are supposed to be having BFF on Friday at Jane Anderson's house. I know she's kind of sick right now, but hopefully she's on the mint. So if you um, want to meet in the parking lot here at 645 and then caravan over to Jane's house for that. There's also a thank you note from Pastor G. If you were here last week, it's the same thank you note, but I left it in because I know a lot of people were not here. There's information on Red, White, and Blue Jeans Sunday next week. We will have a bouncy house for the kids again. It is going to be a water bounce house, so make sure your kids wear their bathing suit or, like, shorts that don't have zippers or anything that will snag because they will not be allowed on the bounce house with zippers. And the youth group is getting ready to go to Kansas City in a few weeks. And we are hoping to rent a van and wondering if anyone might be willing to sponsor that van for us. If you are, um, my email is in the bulletin if you would just email me. And Pastor G also had sent me a text message she wanted me to share with you all. Um, her stuff still has not left Wichita. She has her car, but not the rest of her stuff probably won't be there until July 2nd. Um, she said she's very thankful to have family to stay with. Baby Henry is very sweet and she's blessed to be with him. She continues to keep all of us in her prayers and believes God has some big possibilities on the horizon and she says she loves us all. All right, if you would stand and greet each other as friends in Christ.
I'm going to give this over here to Heather and Charlie, and then would you please stand as you're able to join me in the call to worship. I will read the italicized type, and you will respond with the bold type. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The risen Christ is with us. Please remain standing as we sing our three worship songs. We will begin with Cry of My Heart, which can be found on page 2165 in the Faith We Sing book and will be projected.
Father's Day. Thanks be to God. I think that's the right thing that we need. But thank you. The rest of the joys and concerns are listed in your bulletin. Ken, Rick, Tammy, Madison, Tinya, Karen, Edie, Elsie, Stephen, Pastor Nick and family. They just had the funeral for Pastor Nick's father yesterday, and they're moving in on, I think, Wednesday of this week, the 26th. And then just the pastoral transition. And if you'd like to list any other names in your bulletin, you can. Listening for the voice of God can be uncomfortable. Many of us have become attached to noise and technology. During today's prayer, I'm going to give you some time to sit in the still <laughs> quietness of the sanctuary and listen for what God may be calling you and our church to. Would you please join me in an attitude of prayer? Loving God, we have gathered to worship you today and invite your spirit to be present with us. Thank you for another beautiful yet wet morning and for the friends and family who surround us. Bless those who cannot be with us today. We know that you have a special call, a special purpose for each of us. Please give us ears that are open to your voice and hearts that are open to the needs of the world. Lord, help us to live out your call on each of our lives to serve others. We offer these prayers and the prayers of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The offering prayer will be projected on the screen, if you'll please join me in saying that. Bless the gifts our hands have brought Bless the work our hearts have planned. Ours is the faith, the will, the thought. The rest, O oh God, is in your hand.
Join me as we sing the doxology to receive the offering. talking to me. Um, today I'm going to tell you the long answer as I share my call in the ministry. This spring in my crisis counseling class at Asbury Theological Seminary, we studied Burton's Cooper's book, Why God? Cooper shared experiences counseling individuals going through various crises, death of a relative, life-threatening illness, victims of assault, one of his stories stuck with me though. Cooper relayed the experience he had with the families of two Marines. One of the families received the news that their son had not been killed by a terrorist bomb. The other family, as you might have guessed, was told that their son had been killed. The second family had to struggle with the thought that God allowed their son to die. Cooper gave this family the same challenge as he gave all of his clients, to quit asking, why me, God? And instead to ask, where is God in this? I learned this lesson for the first time in the spring of 2014. 
In my second year of college, I was diagnosed with a cyst on my pituitary gland. The diagnosis came after I had a CT scan to find the cause of a migraine that had lasted over two months. Following my diagnosis, the week before spring break, I decided to take the rest of the semester off for more testing and treatment. One day while I was in the shower, I did something I know we are not supposed to do. I bargained with God. I fell to my knees crying and prayed, God, if you take this cyst away from me, I will do whatever you want me to do. At the end of April, I had a second TC CT scan to, to confirm the presence of a cyst. Guess what? The cyst was gone. I struggle to claim that I was healed when I know there are so many people out there who do not experience the physical healing that I was given. I learned quickly not to ask, why did you heal me but not all these other people? Instead, I began to ask, what am I supposed to do with my life since I was given a second chance? With the great news that my cyst was gone, I enrolled for an online summer class at Kansas Wesleyan. At that point, I was majoring in psychological services. I wanted to be a pediatric psychiatrist. I knew that Kansas Wesleyan was working on a Christian ministry degree, and I had told people that if it came out before the end of my sophomore year, I would change majors. One morning, five years ago today to be exact, when I logged into the Kansas Wesleyan website to work on my assignments, I was greeted with a banner at the top of the page announcing the new Christian ministry degree. Since I had taken the spring semester off, I was still a sophomore. That must have been my answer to my prayer in the shower. Immediately, I emailed Dr. Phil Methley, the chair of the religion and philosophy department at Kansas Wesleyan, and asked what I needed to do to change my major. This was how I would hold up my end of the bargain I made with God. I have also come to recognize this as the first step in answering my call into ministry. The next year and a half were relatively smooth sailing. In October 2015, though, I developed a severe pain on my right side. I was sitting in class, and the pain was so sharp and hit so suddenly that it took my breath away. After class ended, I called the doctor who said I probably had just passed a kidney stone. Over the next three or four weeks, I visited the emergency room and my primary care physician more times than I can even remember. I even went to the urologist, hoping he could help me pass this kidney stone. Finally, I was diagnosed with bilateral pulmonary embolisms. I had blood clots in both my lungs at the age of 22. I was sent immediately to the hospital where I was admitted and spent a week on IV blood thinners. Around 2 a.m. on my first night in the hospital, I was laying in bed with the wall-mounted TV playing something on Disney Junior. It had been a long 12 hours and I was exhausted but also restless. My brain kept reminding me how lucky I was to be alive. People don't survive for weeks with multiple blood clots in their lungs. Then suddenly, I felt a peace wash over me. This is the closest I have come to ever hearing God's voice. The peace also left me with a feeling that I was supposed to be a hospital chaplain. Within a month of being released from the hospital, my pulmonologist had me do a follow-up CT scan to see if any of the blood clots had reabsorbed. That CT scan came back completely clear. My blood clots were gone. That doesn't happen either. While I was in the hospital, my cousin brought me a cup that had part of today's scripture on it. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 and 10 have become my verses. 
They remind me that no matter what I'm going through, God is with me and is using me to share the good news. I even have the verse number inscribed on the back of my class ring from Kansas Wesleyan. I spent the next year angry that I had wasted a week of my life in the hospital on blood thinners when it probably wasn't even medically necessary. After starting seminary in the spring of 2017, I realized that without that hospitalization, I would not have heard my call into chaplaincy. And I have since made peace with the experience. My call continues to evolve. While I do feel called into pediatric hospital chaplaincy, I also feel a little pull towards teaching theology at the college level. Thanks to Pastor G. What I do know is that my call and yours will change throughout our lives. The important thing is that we remain open to what God would have us do. One of the easiest ways to do this is to follow God's greatest commandment and to continue to love God, love all. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able and join me in our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord, which can be found on page 593 of the hymnal and will be projected.
sorry we're getting out so early. I'm still in the class on how to write really long sermons. I'm sure you're okay with that, though. As you go through the week, be sure to stop and listen for what God is calling you to. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Amen.